Hey guys, this is Julie, and I wanted to show you some of the work that we're doing with Sully, the Irish doodle here. Um, a lot of this work is a whole lot of doing nothing. We are not moving him quickly around the house. We're not doing heel work or recall work today. This is all about learning to be in a stationary command like place or downstay and being content with it. Whining is he's not content with being in the command that we've put him in. He thinks there are other options and he thinks that if he whines enough, we will release him. I would say, I Josh is going to correct for right now because we are holding him accountable for a double down. Click, what number is that? Click on an eight and his head goes back down. Okay, we're, we're being really picky right now. We've put him in a double down and we are holding him accountable for that. Sully is a guy who struggles uh, to be still in a room with people and dogs when there's other things going on, he wants to be a part of it. And that's the root of his issue. Complaining about the current circumstances. So if he's on place and he's whining, he's saying, he's disagreeing with what you told him to do. It'll take long before the mind starts to relax. Yes. And really, for a family dog, they need to know how to watch passively and just chill. Down. This is why we do this. Down. Asking for a double down. Nice. So what we do, what you're seeing Josh do, is these exercises where we put the dog in a stationary command, like place, and in this case, it's a down stay. We took it a step further with Sully and asked for a double down stay because he struggles so much with this. And then we start introducing all of these distractions, crazy distractions, toys, Josh will throw things all around the room, we'll ring doorbells, we'll knock doors, we'll play with riggins, we'll do all this crazy stuff while holding him accountable for staying in his double down. If he can do this, then we can take it out to the real world, we know he'll be successful at home, but this is a huge learning session for him. He's learning to watch the world passively instead of acting on impulse, always thinking he needs to be involved and whining to get out of it. Yeah. Josh is letting him know he's doing good. That's important too. E-collar, e-collar, e-collar until his head goes down. Josh is tapping the collar. Nice. As the distractions go up, numbers have to go up. What'd you make it to? A nine. Oh. From a six. I went down to a six. I'll go back down to a six. Uh, because he's just learning what the collar means in the context of being in a down. So if he's in a down and he feels the call, it probably means uh, to relax. It does mean to relax more. So he's learning that. I don't necessarily have to continue. Now, if he really couldn't figure it out, I would say down, but he's had enough rough here. You see, he's starting to figure it out without me having to feed him the answer. Um, so it's good. It's good. He self corrects too, where you'll put it on and get to it. So basically, this is his first time doing this here, and he, he's making a lot of progress and he needs more of this. But you can see it, it's all in the eyes with him. You can see the shifty eyes and stuff. Um, as time goes on, we would just see him relax, right? More, the energy would just be a lot more chill. And he might even be able, he'll have a head up. I'm not saying the dog always has to be in a double down. The double down allows us to tell him that this means to relax. So we're using it. But eventually, see, he's picking his head up. I'm gonna throw the e-collar on at a six, and he puts it down, okay? I need him to know that without a doubt, that when you're in a down, unless I've said another command, if you feel this, it means to relax. There's nothing else it would mean. It would mean no if you're whining as well, which also means stop that and relax. So it, it also is going to say like, whatever you're looking at and worried about, no to that and relax. So we're, we're able to really condition the response that we want when it comes to being, being able to punish on the e-collar. The end result will give you a dog who stops what they're doing and relaxes, which is the ultimate response to a punishment. Right? Okay, that's what we want. We don't want a dog who gets corrected and then all of a sudden they're, they just, they get 
you know, they stay in this crazy state. Even if they stop what they're doing, they're still, their energy's still high. Because what happens is they just go and make a mistake over here. And then you correct that, and then they come over here and they make a mistake. If you want to correct, and the dog goes down to zero, just relaxes, okay? That's good. So, obviously what we're doing is getting reps, where you can get him to make the mistake where his, his head comes up, apply the e-collar pressure, tell him to down if he needs it, that's me giving him the answer, and he puts the head down until, what you see, doesn't take very long, doesn't take many reps. Because of the context, he understands that he needs to put his head down when he feels this pressure, okay? So we won't be confused moving forward. Okay? Um, to it, so difficult for them, so difficult. I mean, so they struggle with it, but every dog struggles with it that comes in there. But once they get it, once they get it, they get it. And the, the dog feels much more reliable, less, uh, much more balanced in the mind altogether, not even just while they're in this exercise, but in all facets of their life, they seem more relaxed, more balanced, and more reliable from exercises like this. <laughs> And there comes the balance. Let him know he's doing a good job. Let 